Joining us on the broadcast as well, our sideline reporter tonight, Britton Lynn. Hi, Britton. Thanks, Rob. I'm here in the student section of the Alabama Florida basketball game, getting in on all the action. Later on tonight, I'll be talking to Mark Ingram, some of these Crimson Chaos guys, and you'll even get to see some of my visit to Dreamland from earlier today. Now let's go to Matt McCoy in the truck. Thanks, Britton. It'd be real special to be able to bring a trophy back to a program like right that for the first time. Ingram, the single setback. Left the middle, he's going to fight, 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 fight. He's in. Touchdown, Mark Ingram. He on his feet to the 15, breaks two tackles, breaks two more. He's in. Touchdown, Crimson Tide. And that is going to give him the single season rushing record for the University of Alabama. Listen up, you Heisman voters. That's the second touchdown of the night off a spectacular play by Mark Ingram. In the closest race ever, the 2009 Heisman Trophy is awarded to Mark Ingram of the University of Alabama. Path and the Heisman winner joined live now by our Britton Lynn. What does it mean to you? I've won a Heisman Trophy, bringing back the first Heisman Trophy from Alabama. Um, it was real special to me uh, just to be able to do that for me and my family and a lot everything that we've been through just to win an award like that and to show the family that we can overcome anything was real special to me and just the story program of our uh, story history of our football program, they, they never had a Heisman Trophy winner, so just to be able to do that for my teammates and the coaches and the fans was well, real special for me that I could do that for them. You also had another incredible experience going to Pasadena, winning a national championship. What was that like? It was great. It was a crazy atmosphere. atmosphere. That's what you play college football for is to play in games like that, and I think everybody's just real excited and real happy to know that all the hours we spent, all the dedication, hard work, all the blood, sweat, and tears we put into this uh, that it finally paid off with a national championship. But um, at the same time, uh, that's behind us. That's always going to be always going to be part of our history, and we're looking forward to next year and trying to uh, do it again. Well, other than football, you're also a student. Sometimes people forget about that. What does it mean to you be a student at Alabama, especially being from Flint, Michigan? Uh, it's, it was a lot different, a lot a culture shock at first, but you know I really love it down here. Everybody's real friendly, real nice. The students, the professors, everybody just involved with the university is really uh, nice. And at times people forget, you know. But at, like right after this, I got to go study for a few exams. But it's, it's tough. But you learn how to manage it. What's it like being at another athletic event like this, where you're not the one playing? It's kind of awkward, a little bit, because uh, usually you know, just used to going out and performing all the time, but. Uh, I, I know a majority of all these guys, and I wish them the best of luck, and they're having a, a good year so far, and it's just, it just means a lot to me to come here and support them. Okay, back to the Heisman Trophy thing one last time. Where is the trophy right now? It's at my mother's house uh, on the kitchen table, <laughs> in the middle of the kitchen table. So that's where it's at. That's a, okay, well, thank you very much. Back to you, Rob. Yep. I like that. Put it right there in the kitchen table. I don't know if you're aware of this. My baby won the Heisman. Hey, we got to get you a trophy case, Mark. You're only a, you're a sophomore now. You're going to be a junior next year. You might get another one. Hey, it's, it's better than the mail that collects at my dining room table. <laughs> hey, I would not want to be in front of that young man trying to stop him from scoring no a touchdown. No way. Time now for another extra credit report. Britton Lynn from Dreamland Barbecue. When Alabama fans think of the most delicious place to eat in Tuscaloosa, only one restaurant comes to mind, Dreamland Barbecue. The quaint barbecue joint opened back in 1958, the same year Alabama's beloved Paul Bear Bryant first started coaching the Tide. Ever since then, the University of Alabama and Dreamland formed a strong bond. Dreamland's eight locations now serve chicken, sausage, and a variety of sides. But what the barbecue hangout will always be known for is its mouth-watering ribs. I assume, Britain, that that's the outfit you normally wear when you go <laughs> for barbecue. She was getting in there, too. Right, Britain? <laughs> um, I don't normally wear barbecue, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I just want to look cute, you know. That, that talk all you want. Hey, how many Dreamlands are there in the Tuscaloosa area? There's two in the Tuscaloosa right. area. There's one in right near campus, and then there's the 
original. It's a little bit off campus, and it's in that. Uh, yeah. I, I went to Dreamland last night, guys. You did? Yeah, me and my best friend went. Myself. I was there. <laughs> All right. Your you, three favorite you? places to eat here in Tuscaloosa, Britain. Talk. We already did Dreamland. I'm assuming Chuck's Fish serves some fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> Fry fish? What, what kind of fish? Uh, I like this stuffed shrimp. It's pretty good. Ooh. That's not really a fish, is it? <laughs> and then what, what about Buffalo Phil's? Take me through their menu. Well, Buffalo Phil's, it's more just American cooking. You know, it's got like, we like to get their queso fries there, which is probably the most unhealthy thing on the menu. Right. <laughs> hey, do me a favor. Describe the queso fries. What are those? <laughs> pieces it's so good uh, Britain what are what, what's the percentage of freshman 15 on campus does it <laughs> pretty, hit everybody I'm pretty sure it's everyone we're gonna go down to Britain Lynn who's with those guys thanks Brent I'm down here with Crimson and Chaos member Klein Thompson first of all Klein what does it take to be a member of this group uh, it basically just takes a lot of uh, want to a lot of enthusiasm for Alabama basketball and just getting here on time for games and showing up and just giving your all at every game. Tell me about your shirt. That does not look Alabama to me. Coach Grant played at Dayton in the mid-80s. He wore number 33, so we support Coach Grant and uh, wear his college jersey. Okay. Uh, oh, hey, look, we got a fellow ESPNU Canvas Connection member here. We got Nick Goulas. He's been doing a couple stories with us today. Nick, tell us, how do you guys prepare for a game like this? Uh, this, is usually, this is actually one of our bigger games of the year so far, but just like any other game, we get here three hours early, put out newspapers, print info sheets, get as much dirt as we can on the opposing team, and just try to make a difference out here. Uh, we count down starting at 10 seconds for our own guys, and with 10 seconds, we start counting for five on Florida. So it's just trying to confuse their players, trying to help our guys out. So. Tell me about some of the strategies you guys have to get inside the Florida players' heads. It usually starts pregame and shoot around because that's when it's quiet. It's normally only us students here because it's an hour and a half before game and we got to get our good seats. And so usually when we can talk with them one on one, that's when they start getting in their heads, telling them, you know, you can't make that shot. Oh, you need to step behind the three point line and you might actually make it. That's when we start rolling on this stuff.